Okay. We'll do, do this. Well, um, kind of recapping Saturday night after spending the day yesterday watching the film. You know, a lot of things we talked about after the game did show up on the tape. I started with tackling, had some opportunities to make tackles, um, and didn't get that executed. We could have helped things a couple of times, just a couple, but a couple of times uh, guys getting out of a gap that created a larger space than, than needed to happen. Um, and again, it goes back to, you know, you know, open, open set offense and spreading things out. Those are tough one-on-one -on -one tackles, but we got to definitely get better, better at that end. Uh, offensively, just the execution at the beginning, um, one, one there and the end th and some plays that we can execute as an offense. And I think it showed in the second half because we ran some similar plays that got executed at a better level and, and we got to find to be more efficient there early on would have made a huge, huge difference. Just like anything, there was some positive on this tape. I mean, the play Caleb Lightmore makes on punt, where it's a high snap and has to to avoid a tackle and kicks the thing with his left foot, and and that's really changed the game. You think about an interception that took place right after that. Um, and I actually think Caleb and the kickoff squad had a great game. Uh, the way he kicked it off and we tackled, got a couple of times inside the 20-yard 20, 20 line that showed up. I actually thought our corners on the on the perimeter outside receiver did a nice job. I mean, those guys can run routes. If you look at a few big plays, did happen from the inside receiver. I thought uh, I thought that that group, our corners played well, and, and Jamar played well. Uh, you know, he's got something with he's running it, and we threw it to him a few times, made it physical. Uh, he did uh, come to play, especially he was huge for us in that second half. Um, a couple of penalties early. Um, negated some good drives as well, and we got to clean that up going back again offensively. Those were drive killers when that took place. So a lot to work on, um, and again, it gets an exciting week. I know our guys are we're excited about this next opportunity, going to a place in Seattle, University of Washington. we got a bunch of respect for. Uh, they got a bunch of good players, um, and, and I know we're looking forward to, to taking on that challenge. You know, it's uh, a little bit unique. They haven't played. We have. And, um, you know, that's some good and some bad, to be honest with you. We've played a game. We know some things we got to clean up and work on. Uh, they got a, a new offense over there that we don't have tape of. And so there's some uncertainty that comes with that. And so it'll be a definite, definite challenge. Uh, they've been good on defense for a long time over there. And uh, they got some good players and a good scheme. And so we got our work cut out for us on that end. Questions? Yeah, Jonathan, it looked like uh, uh, Hodgins and Sandberg, they looked like they played a lot Saturday night. Did you have a few depth issues on the on the line? Or I, I, I didn't keep track of snaps, but I... Right. No, they did. They played way more than the guys behind them. You know, uh, James Rawls and, and Cody Anderson didn't nearly have the same type of snaps. Um, some of it was the pace Washington State was going at was not very fast. And so you did get a little bit breather. They were taking a lot of the play clock. And then you look at the total snaps in the game. I think offensively, they had about 60 to 65 snaps. We had 90, almost 90 offensively. And so there wasn't that, that many staff, snaps to feel the need to rotate too much. So would you, would you anticipate playing Bennett and Skelton a little bit more this week? Then, yep. Or? Yep. Those guys in particular will play against offenses where, you know, they got a couple tight ends in the game. Um, you know, we, we got a couple substitutions, nickel base personnel defensively that they'll be a, They'll be involved quite a bit more. Did did Ham play some defensive end on on Saturday? It looked like he he might have. I don't know. That's... Well, I mean, he looks like a defensive end a lot of the time. When we're in nickel, we got two interior deer linemen. He's on the edge outside the tackle some, and that's traditionally where DNs play. And so he did did line up there. He uh, he, he he didn't impact the game as as you know you you would normally see him do or or did they do something to take him out of it or was he uh, or or what did you think yeah there was part of their scheme to, to take it out of it i mean you look at sometimes you could tell the back was tracking where he was at to help out uh the tackle and he so he got chipped a few times he was close a few times you know they did a good, good job that ball was coming out pretty quick a lot of the time um and so you're not always going to get home when the ball is coming out that quick so I don't think he played poorly you know it just didn't happen for him a couple of times on pass rushes the ball comes out um but and they did have a little bit of emphasis you could tell in their protections to focus on hey coach so uh before we I, I have a few looking ahead questions but looking back um after the game on Saturday 
Coach Rolovich said that there were 32 players that didn't travel with Washington State. He wouldn't confirm whether it was or was not because of COVID testing, contact tracing, et cetera. So my question is, as the coach who played him, does the team coming in have to tell you certain things about their testing? Does that all go through the Pac-12? I feel like the whole process is still kind of a mystery in my head. So can you walk us through what you guys have to do each and every week to guarantee that you get to play? Yeah, there's a lot there. Uh, I, I, I know our protocols and we went through and we tested in the morning and we were, we were cleared. Everybody that played was cleared off the testing. The PAC 12 runs the uh, protocols and what every team has to do. I'd have to pass that to Dr. Doug Ackerman to know all of what, what that is. And so I know for our, and our roster, we tested that morning. Everybody who played for us was, was negative. And that's what you have to do. You have to have every person who plays has to test negative that morning. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. How many guys were not available to you on Saturday? Uh, just the couple of guys that I mentioned on the, like Addison Gums, uh, hamstring wise. Um, that was it. Well, no, that's not it. I mean, Newell, I mean, we've got some, football injuries that we're always going to have some guys unavailable get get back to the 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 defense um it, it looked like you didn't send a lot of guys at the quarterback were you playing more uh coverage and and hope and kind of trying to confuse Delora a little bit or 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 what was what was the approach there yep yep you're always trying to change up your looks the ball was coming out pretty quickly. And so with the ball coming out quickly, the more you send and the ball comes out, that's less guys to be able to cover slash tackle. So we were changing up the looks, um, did mix up the coverages. Um, and uh, again, we, I, we did blitz some, um, but maybe not as much as uh, playing coverage. But in, I mean, there'll, there'll be games where you'll, where you will send more guys down the road. This was, this yeah, with, well, yeah, without question. I mean, each week's going to be different. Each offense is going to be different. Um, but I know from an offensive perspective, when I, we're going, we're throwing it quickly. I want to get blitzed, if that makes sense. Right, right. Um, a couple of personnel things it, it, on the depth chart. Tago is is dropped off. Is is he still around? Or yeah, he uh he was unavailable middle of the week, um, and so he he is not available currently. And then uh, I, I've been been asked about Lindsey. Um, he did. He he was there, but he didn't play Saturday. Or yeah, some of that was he was totally there, available, uh, good to go. Um, some of it was the rotation at at the receiver position, um, and we actually thought we were pretty productive at that spot. I think you know distributing the ball. You can see Bradford had catches, and Zariah had a good slant route on third down. Uh, Colby Champ, um, and it goes back to a little bit. We thought this this receiver position would start as a committee and, and it played out that way. And so uh, that's going to happen on occasion, different personnel groups, receivers playing at a high level, didn't rotate as much, um, but we're in no way down on, on, down on Ty John. Uh, it, it looked like Washington state crowded the line of scrimmage a lot, that almost like they were kind of daring Tristan to throw a little bit. Is that maybe what, did you see that too? Or? They did some of that and some of that pre-snap and then they bailed out of there. And it goes into disguise defensively, uh, showing like as if we're coming up the line of scrimmage and coming and then they clicked out a good amount too. Um, coach, how do you, John Wilner after the game said that Washington State, even though they had a whole new staff, new scheme, they looked like the team that was ready to play whereas the Beavers looked like they hadn't practiced in seven months. How do you get your team up to a level that you want them to be and be prepared? Yeah. I mean, we work and prepare each week, you know, and so you're going to, you're going to win and lose some games. There, there's, there's no other way around it. And obviously we're not trying to play poorly at the start of the start of the game. Uh, we looked at our preparation that we felt good about and our guys practiced hard. Look, we didn't execute offensively early in the game, but, turn that around quickly in the second half, vice versa, defensively come out and we got a three and out. We got some early stops. So we, uh, we're always trying to play well in the games. And sometimes it doesn't go your, go your way. Uh, along the offensive line, did you, did you play the same five guys for each snap or did you ever sub sub a guy out? I believe it was the same five guys. 
because it, it looks like Corbin Sorensen didn't didn't play at all. Is that just a just didn't happen to get in or or? Uh... Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you oftentimes O line you need some continuity throughout the game and feeling like those guys were 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 playing well. Um, so it wasn't the need to feel like we needed to sub somebody. What 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 was your assessment of the offensive line play of the first first game of this group? I think there was some good things in regards to their physicality, trying to uh, make it physical. I mean, Noose had a great game, maybe the best game he's had since I've been here. Um, we did have a, a couple early missed assignments that that cost us on run games, missed targeting, we get leaving a inside backer unblocked. Um, I think the pass pro we can tighten up a little bit, um, and again, that's a group effort. All eleven guys, we got to run a route uh, with some precision, get the ball out on time. Um, so overall, I, I like the group. There's definitely things to clean up. And I think we will, as we move along this season. Coach, looking at the defense, obviously that's a, that's a side of the ball that you got a lot of guys returning. And so what are some of the things that you'd like to see them do better? There wasn't the start that you were hoping to have, but what do you, what are you really focusing on this week changing between Saturday and this Saturday? Yeah. Well, I kind of mentioned the tackling already. That's obviously a piece we got to do a great job of. Anytime you play games and people can run the ball successfully, it's going to be hard. So we got to do better against the run game. Now we're going to play, we think, an entirely different offense coming this weekend. Um, but we got to shore up the run game to uh, – that will be first and foremost. You, you touched on this at the outset, but uh, would, you, would you rather be the, the team that's played a game or, or the team that yeah. hasn't played a game but has the video? I know. It's a good question. I mean, you can see some positive and negative on both sides. I do think it's a positive that we've played a game, and uh, now we, we can address some things we got to get better at. Um, I think there's the element of surprise when they're, they're playing their first game. they got a new offensive coordinator and not knowing that exact scheme. So I can, I can see it both ways. This is uh, obviously this is your first road trip. What are two kind of two or three things that are on your radar about traveling, you know, during a pandemic that, you know, you might not, you know, might not think much about normally? Well, one, one thing is beautiful for me. I don't have to decide all the protocols on traveling. You know, Dan Vander Eat is sitting back here in our athletic department. They've spelled all this out on how it's going to be a feel a little bit different. Um, but I'm just confident in the people around uh, this place that will will be safely going about it. With two games already canceled and and what's going on with Utah and and you know what we learned afterwards with with your last week's opponent, do you have concerns moving forward about you know more games being missed and and how do you approach kind of that unknown? Well, I think it is a, it's a little bit unknown, and uh, I don't don't control it. I know that, uh, our protocols have, uh, given this opportunity to be able to play. I'm talking PAC 12 conference wide, everyone's doing their best, but at the same time, respecting this virus and, uh, and making sure everyone's, everyone's safe. If we get to play, uh, in regard to, to Washington, they've got still got four quarterbacks listed on as possibilities for starters. You, you were on a staff with Jimmy Lake. Do you have any, I mean, are you, is, is this a, playing a little poker with him at all and trying to figure out who they're going to play or how do you prep for them? Yeah. Um, you know, you got, they got four guys listed and you, and you, and you gotta, you can't prep for four different skill sets. Um, again, we're, we're really focused on ourselves defensively. Um, we already talked to address to kind of shorn up some of the things that on Saturday, we got to get better. We're going to need to trust our rules because we don't exactly know what it's going to look, look like schematically and, uh, and then be ready to adjust during the game. Um, Coach, special teams struggled this this week. You know, you had Trevon taking a uh, – fielding a kick at like a three when he should have let it go. You missed a field goal. Um, the the snap issues. What are you guys doing to kind of shore that up? I mean, that was a pretty veteran group there. Yeah, you know, Bradford, that wasn't the easiest one not to field. He had to track a little bit to do it. But, yeah, we're not trying to catch it. Uh, inside the five I will say if we did a better job of blocking the gunner running down he's got a chance to to go with that uh had the high snap that we addressed Caleb made a, a great play on that we actually got a blocked a tipped punt that were tighten up that protection piece which was not good enough um there were some positive signs like I said on on kickoff the way Caleb did punt the ball we got a bunch of fair catches there so you know just like every game there's gonna be some good to clean up and then the, there was some positive end 
Husky uh, Stadium is, is a place you know well. Is there anything different about playing a game in there at night as opposed to the afternoon? Oh, I, I mean, you know, the weather's always something. The wind is always something. Uh, it is a beautiful stadium. Got a bunch of re- good memories in the, in that spot. Uh, but I don't think there's something glaring between 1230 and 8. Like, the, the wind doesn't change anything like that at night. or that's a, I guess that was the main thing I was wondering. Yeah, no, I think it's more particular day weather coach, pattern coach jake got his uh first start with jacksonville on sunday were you able to watch the game and just how exciting was it um for you to be able to kind of see him out there yeah yeah i wasn't watching i didn't get to see the entire game saw uh some of it looked like he did a lot of good things uh really happy for him um did not see that you know the scramble the late touchdown run i didn't quite see that spin move at oregon state but he's adding to his repertoire you know uh so, yeah, we're definitely cheering, cheering him on and uh, really just great story. If anyone deserves to have some success at that level, that kid does. I was going to say, he joked all the time at Oregon State that he didn't run, he wasn't fast. Uh, were you laughing at all when you saw back that spin move? Yeah, the spin move was different, man. We did not, we did not see that. Uh, he did have a nice run at UCLA. I think he pulled the ball late and, and scored last year for us. But uh, the spin move, he didn't break that out with us. Uh, you, you mentioned Gums earlier. Is he any any possibility of him playing this week? We'll have a better idea toward the end of the week. Um, and, you know, again, we'll practice tomorrow and see what see what he kind of looks like. And then Mo- Morris played a little bit at the end. Um, is he more any possibility he'll play more this week? Or yeah, and some of the the you know his limited amount just because leading up to it he had limited amount of practice, um, but he did get in. He had a good tackle, um, and so yeah, we'll, we see him contributing more this this week. Sorry, did you say you talked to Jake since his debut yesterday or not yet? Text message a couple of times okay. back and forth. Yeah. Cool. What was his reaction? Because after the game, he was a little uh, – Right. Down. No, we texted a little bit before the game leading up. I didn't – I haven't hit him up. Uh, well, I texted him after, but I haven't heard back from him after the game. Thank he's pretty you. busy, man. He's, he's working. He's big time in you. Yeah, I know. That's good. Hey, Jonathan, was Jaden Grant. All right, after he limped off there. Yeah, yep. He was out there a little bit last night. Um, we'll kind of see by how it how it feels, but we don't see that being a long term thing. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you.